Hey crafters, I am Nilton from craftofprogramming.com and I am a senior electronic trading Java developer based in New York City. So you want to learn how to create Java threads. In this video I'm going to show you three ways that um, you know you can use to create Java threads. Make sure you stick around till the end because at the end I'm going to show you the most flexible way to create a Java thread that doesn't explicitly involve either extending the thread class or to instantiate the thread class. So make sure you stick around till the end. The first way to create a Java thread is to extend the thread class. So let's uh, create here our um, thread subclass. Thread subclass example. And you have to uh, extend the thread class okay and um, it's usually a good policy to or good practice I should say to you know basically specify a name for the um, for your thread I'm here or declaring a constructor that calls super and then the most important method you need to override uh, when you extend the thread class is to run method run method is the main body of the that contains the logic of the thread okay so you need to override this method and basically what we're going to be doing here in this very simple example is just print you know um, the thread is just going to print a bunch of even numbers but before actually executing i would like to um do another um you know just basically print the uh, name of the thread here so again new line and then Let's print the name of the thread, say is executing. And this is a very useful method here, current thread. Uh, this method basically gives you the handle to the current thread that is actually executing this code, right? So this is super useful when f you want to grab a hold of the thread, say to, um, you know, get the stack trace like you see here, or in this case, uh, I want to get the name. So every time you need an attribute of a thread, just call current thread and you will get handle of the thread. So I want to print the thread just so that when we are uh, looking at the console, I know which thread is running. And then at the end, before the thread dies, I want to say uh, blah 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 is done executing and will die. Okay, so we have our simple, you know, thread subclass here. Let's go to main method. And let's uh, instantiate this thread, okay? Uh, and like I said, it's good practice to um, use, to give your um, custom threads or user threads a name. So let's give this name here. And um, let's just call subclass example. So now you have, uh, you have instantiated the thread object, right? Now, how do you actually start this thread? Well, you may be tempted to call the run method but uh, let's see why this is n doesn't quite do what you think it does. So um, let's run this and because I'd like to show you what's going to happen. Main is executing. Isn't that a bit weird? And main is done executing. So why is that? Well, it is because um, when you call run, right, you are actually um, simply r running this code within the calling thread, right? And in this case is main, right? So what you really want to do is you want to call start. Now, the difference between start and run is that start actually uh, schedules, the creates a, a, a new operating system thread and then schedules it for running, right? So this is actually a, a synchronous call where the calling thread, in this case main, creates this thread and schedule it for execution and then main just continues. So because main will continue, what you really should do here is call join. Now what join does, it's actually so throws an interrupt exam. What join does is it waits for this thread or the thread that it's joining, in this case this, dies. So that's what we want to do. Okay, let's run this program for you to see uh, what's happening. So now you see that the uh, thread subclass example is the one that is actually executing our very useful uh, even numbers printing, okay? And then uh, the thread has finished executing, died, and main was waiting for it to 
finish. Okay. So a few things before we move on to the next is you cannot call it should only call start once. And you cannot, you cannot call start after the thread dies. So for example, if I do this call start twice, uh, let's see what happens. There you go. So you're going to get here an illegal thread state exception. Also, you cannot call um, start after the thread dies. So let's do, let's call here. And you see, we got again an exception. All right. So anyway, let's move on. Um, so option two will be to basically implement the runnable interface. Okay, let's call it runnable implementation example. And this is going to implement the runnable interface. Okay, let's see. So when you implement this option of using the runnable, uh, implemented the runnable interface, uh, the runnable interface, if you look here, has just a run method, right? An abstract run method. So that's what you need to implement. And here, just like, or similar, I should say, to subclassing the thread class, uh, you put the main uh, logic of the thread inside the run method. So I don't want to duplicate this method. So let me actually, I want to extract a method here, which I'm going to put on main and let's call it execute. Okay, so now I have an execute method here, which I can reuse um, here as well. Execute and let's go back to main and let's here. So you instantiate a thread class and what we interested, that's a bit of uh, the constructor is overloaded, but the method that we are interested is the one that takes a runnable and a name. Okay. So we created our runnable here implementation example. Okay. And let's give it the name of our uh, thread here. And let's again in introduce an example. It could be runnable. That's okay. And let's start and let's join. Okay. All right. Let's execute this. So as you can see, the thread is happily, you know, executing and printing the numbers as per our requirement. Now, obviously, because we are on Java post Java eight world with lambdas, then you actually do not have to create, you know, a class to implement an interface, right? Another way of doing this is to actually, um, you know, even before lambdas, you could just create a an inner class, okay, that has the execute method. So this is perfectly equivalent. You can do that, or another option is just to replace this with a lambda, or you can replace this with a method reference. So that's the same. All of these are equivalent. And if you want to me to run this, I'll run and you see that everything is good. Okay. So as promised towards the end now, let's talk about the most powerful and flexible option on how to create a Java thread. That's to leverage the executor service. Now the executor service is a very powerful mini framework that it's part of the uh, java.util.concurrent package that was introduced in Java 1.5. And um, I don't have time to cover the entire thing. I'm going to cover it in a different uh, video, but I just want to show you very quickly how powerful it is. So this option is to use the executor service. Okay. And basically the executor service as a, you know, basically singleton here executors, where there's a bunch of uh, factory methods that you can see. And the one that I want to use is the one that gives me an executor service backed by a single thread that is basically consuming tasks or runnables off of a uh, queue. Okay. So let's just call it service. And then you basically create the service for you. And then a service you submit just like before, right? Submit and then main execute. Okay. So this is pretty much equivalent to what we've been doing before, right? We're creating our thread here implicitly, and then we submit the work just like we did here when we passed in the runnable to the constructor and we call start or when we subclass thread class and then we overrode the run method. So let's uh, run this. So as you see, it is happily running. Now, if you're a little bit uh, observant, you will see that the name of the thread is actually uh, it says pool here. It's because executor service typically, you know, you can use it uh, as a thread pool. 
all right if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up um, also hit that notification bell and subscribe because i publish videos here frequently so now you understand how to create java threads so the next step is to understand java thread attributes and in particular thread groups click here to watch that video